Hello everybody and welcome to Everyday Lead Code. This is another problem that we are going to solve today. It's called as FizzBuzz Multi-Threaded. Uh, it's a, again a concurrent programming problem. Uh, just like yesterday, we are going to solve this. But yeah, today we are not going to use the condition variable. We are going to use the mutex and solve it. So yeah, what, what, how do we solve it? But before that, let's understand the question. Write a program that outputs the string representation of numbers from 1 to n. However, if the number is divisible by 3, you have to output 3. Sorry, output fizz. If the number happens to be divisible by 5, you output bus. If the number happens to be divisible by both 3 and 5, you output fizz bus. For example, for n is equal to 15, we output 1, 2. Then 3 is divisible by 3, so we output fizz. 4, 5 is, 5 is divisible by 5, so output buzz. Uh, 6, 6 is divisible by 3, you output fizz. 7, 8 is printed as it is. 9 is divisible by 3, so you output a fizz. 10 is divisible by 5, you output buzz. Uh, 11, 12, 12 is divisible by uh, 3, so you output fizz. And 15 and so on, 13 and 14 is this printed as it is. 15 will be printed like 15 fizz bus because it is divisible by both. So that's how I want to solve it. Okay, that's how that's what should be the output if n is 15. Now, so suppose you are given a following code. Now they are asking you to suppose something. You have to assume this that you are given this fizz bus class. And there is some function, okay, there is some function fizzbus, which is a constructor, okay, there is a constructor there, and again in the public, uh, again in the public class, uh, public functions, uh, public member functions of the class, um, you have functions like fizz, buzz, that is used to output buzz if it is divisible by 5 and you have fizz buzz if it is divisible by 3 and 5 both and you have to output the number if it is 1, 2 or uh, 4 something that is not divisible by any of the two. Oops, uh, I lost it. Yeah. So now here is the main thing. So you have some, imagine you had a main function, okay. Uh, this was your main function and in the main function, you have a thread called as A and the call, it calls fizz as the function. Uh, oops, 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 oops. Uh, there is a thread B that calls buzz. There is a thread C that calls fizz buzz uh, and there is a thread d that calls number as the function now when this happens the compiler automatically understands this but what in reality happens is that thread c can be executed before thread a it's there is no such uh, so all of them are going to use the same resource count. Okay. There is a number that all of them are going to use. Uh, that, that's what you want to synchronize. Let's call that number to be count. Okay. So if thread A and thread C, both of them want to access count, you cannot really access that count. So count has to come in the critical section of the code. That's what we understand first. Now, let's uh, walk through the code because concurrency is something that you need to walk through the code. But before that, you also need to understand that which is the common resource and if there is a common resource, which is the critical section of that common resource. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to have one mutex. Okay whoever has that mutex either thread a either thread b either thread c or thread d whoever has that mutex is that thread 
that thread will uh, whoever has that that thread will have the access to my count variable i do not want anyone to access my count variable that's what is synchronization here so let's understand what i have done here okay i have just initialized a mutex m i did not use a conditional vari condition variable but i just initialized it so there is no point in uh, having the condition variable here there is a count one i've just initialized the count to one and whenever i call a thread it passes the constructor it passes a value n so that comes from the input we do not really need to do anything about that uh, that's done by lead code itself n is the input now i put that n into my thread thread variable n so this this n is the thread variable n here and that and this n is this particular n here okay this count means that it's going to be this count that we are talking about and what happens what i do is whenever let's say fizz was called first when fizz is called my count initially would be 1 count was 1 i called thread a thread b and thread c what happens is any one will get the mutex first let's say a got the mutex the moment a gets the mutex so a has the mutex uh a has the mutex now the moment a gets the mutex a is going to uh, lock it first it's going to lock it and then it will check if the count value happens to be uh, if count is divisible by 3 but not divisible by 5 if that case happens to be true if that case happens to be true then i need to print whatever fizz buzz or whatever fizz i need to print fizz and after that i need to release the lock right so that so i i need to increase the count first and i need to re release the lock i need to release this particular lock what if i got a count that is not divisible by 3 that is not divisible by 3 i simply release the lock saying that hey i do not uh, since the count is 1 i do not require this lock somebody else can use that lock now thread b thread c thread d all of them all of these uh, were actually waiting for that lock so now from since thread a releases the lock b c or d anyone randomly will get the lock count is 1 let's say d gets the lock since the count is not divisible by 3 it's not divisible by 5 i just print the count uh, and then uh, that's me, that means i print a 1 and then i release the lock saying that anyone from a b i increment the count also count becomes 2 now from a b or c anybody can randomly access this mutex lock it it depends on the operating system usually since everybody goes together there is a slight difference in milliseconds um to get that acquire that lock and yeah that that's how the code has been written now that's i understood the logic now what happens here i have done this so while true if the count is greater than n so if the count happens to be if the n is 15 and if i increment the count to such a stage that uh, it becomes 15 16 then i need to break out of this while loop and i i just unlock the mutex saying that uh, i do not need anything but that that's the last base case if the count happens to be divisible by 3 and not divisible by 5 then i print a fizz i increment the count and i unlock the mutex else i just unlock the mutex so somebody else can use the lock again if uh, 
<clears throat> similarly i've done in every function if the count now buzz buzz means it's i log the mutex if available if not available it will wait here only if it is available it will go here and then since the count would be divisible by 5 if it's divisible by 5 i print my buzz and then i increment the count by 1 and then i unlock the mutex i need to unlock the mutex every damn time so that i do not go into the infinite loop it happened with me i did not unlock the mutex so somebody else was in the wait state everybody went into the wait state time limit exceeded i went into the infinite loop so unlocking the mutex is damn 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 important it's it's a deadlock otherwise uh so next is fizz bus you have similar conditions similar things similar statements i've just used the same logic everywhere in the function but understanding the logic is the main thing um so yeah that's that's about this code today so i hope you understood this video i'm not really going into the code much but it's just the logic that we need to understand and we need to understand which resource which resource is the resource that i need to log uh, on so for example your the variable count was being accessed by all of them so i need a mutex to log that critical section of the code and since i am changing the count nobody else at that particular point of time will utilize my variable count so that's how i came that's that's how uh, we understand and yes Uh, that's it for today all the best study well